when I was reading these poems, uh, they were all sent from email, and I thought they were all very impressive, very good, very exciting to read. Uh, because I know there's a lot to cover in school, a lot of different things to learn. I wrote poetry in third grade, and my teacher encouraged me by hanging my poem on the wall. We didn't have HCAM studio to read them in. But hanging my poem on the wall made all the difference to me, that somebody else liked hearing something that I would write, that it meant something to someone else. And I think that is important. And I think all of your teachers have done this for you today, being here. So I thank the teachers, I thank the principals, and our superintendent, and I thank all of you as parents and family for coming out on a beautiful Saturday afternoon to support your child here reading their poem. We have Anushka Datar. So please welcome Anushka up here. How are you today? I know the, the first time that you came here, Anushka, I was only four. You were only four, that's right. And let's see, did, uh, you had a poem maybe that uh, your mom wrote? It was about India, I think, right? Yeah. Yes, uh huh. And, yeah. and so you're still writing poetry and you're much older because now what grade are you in? Kindergarten. You're in kindergarten, okay, how about that? Uh, I can tell that Anushka likes poetry. And today you have what, how many poems for us? Two. Two. Now there was one that I was, I wanted to make the request that you read very last. Actually, we were gonna start with it, but it's this one. Could you read that very last and read this one first and I'll tell you why after. So if you could step up a little bit, take a breath and begin with your title and then go. My dreams. In my dreams, I can I float through the air. I can feel my hair floating backwards in the air. I know it's my family's love. I see pretty flowers in my dreams and the prettiest butterflies. It makes me feel extraordinary good because I know my family loves me. I love the colors of flowers and it makes me feel happy when a butterfly sits on my finger and tickles me. In my dreams, I am a bird, I am a cow, I am a goat, I am a swan, I am a flamingo. I can be anything I want. In my dreams, I, in my ima imagination, I can be a person, I can be an insect, I can be an animal, I can be still life, I can be me too. I love me and my dreams. I dream about lots of things, I dream and dream. Every night, I hope my dream catcher catches my bad dreams. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, yeah, I certainly get the idea that you like poetry, and, and you like good dreams also, and mm -hmm. you like using your imagination, and yeah. you take us all on a little bit of a journey with your poem. So thank you for that. Me. I am me, and no one else is like me. No one will ever be like me, because I am special to the world. I'm unique, I have my own talents. No one looks like me, no one talks like me. So there, I am me to the world. Ah. Take a bow if you like. <laughs> Thank you, Anushka, well done. I would like to invite up here on the stage to join me now is our first poet, today, and that is Madeline Godfroy. Please welcome her up with some cheer. <laughs> Hi, Madeline. <laughs> Come on over here. Isn't that beautiful behind me? There with the lights. So here's where you will be reading your poem. Okay. And I'm stepped to the side. And I know, I believe that maybe you started school not too long ago, right? What grade are you in? First grade. First grade, and working on poetry already. Now, I'm curious, mm -hmm. did you decide to write some poems um, when you were in school, or was it in your free time at home that you wrote the poems that I have received? Um, one was at home, and the other two were in school. Ah, okay. So I meant two were in home, and the two, one. Okay, two at home, <laughs> one, uh -huh. But the, I guess uh, the important point is you've been learning about poetry at school already in first grade. Hmm? Uh -huh. And uh, did it inspire you to write a little more at home? Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. wow. Well, I'm excited to have you share. Are these your first poems um, uh, that you've ever written? No. Oh, there are more. 
Oh. Well, I'm curious. Uh, perhaps you could put a book together, a first grade poem sometime, or in a journal. Maybe. But I know that you have written um, two poems, and you have a marathon wish. Yes. So would you like to begin with your first one, tell everyone your title, and then go ahead and you can step up a little closer and read. Okay. No more fun. No more fun. No more fun. No more fun in room two. That's the bad news, but here's the good news. We will now have fantastic fun, fabulous fun, amazing fun, awesome fun, and lots of other kinds of fun. Hope you have fun. Oops, the best day ever. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, we'll give a hand to you there. Uh, and I know that there was a little story with this um, that you were writing about fun in the classroom. Yes. Um, why were you writing about fun? Did your teacher say no more fun in here? No. She, um, we, we can't use the word fun in our writing anymore. Okay. Uh -huh. So we use better words like fantastic, oh, amazing, okay. exciting. Oh, some more detail in your words, exploring with words, uh -huh. maybe having fun with them. <laughs> All right, could you share the next poem, please, and read the title also? The storm, lightning flashing, raindrops splashing, booming thunder, get under. We are wet, but not my pet because the storm is over. And did you bring a marathon poem or message also? I brought a... Ah, uh, you did. Okay. And did you write this in school or at home um, for the marathon runners? At home. At home, okay. Well, uh, it has a word that rhymes with fun that people do in the marathon. Any guesses? Run. 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 Is she right? Yes. OK. Um, so uh, this is a very nice message that you have created. If you could step up, and this is the last uh, contribution that we have. So uh, go ahead and enjoy it. Have fun as you share your last message to all those who run in the marathon. Run, run, run. Marathon runners, marathon runners, I have a message for you. It doesn't matter how fast you go, you just want to make it through. And done. Uh, would you like to take a bow? Uh, uh, yes, you can. Well done. Thank you very much. We have Carly Rolicky coming up now uh, from the back. And I think it always helps to get in. We'll do a lot of clapping here today. How's that? Mm -hmm. Hi, Carly. <laughs> Mike's going to adjust the mics and come on. Nice and close up here. And I believe that you started school not too long ago also. Yeah. What grade are you in? First. First grade at Center School? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations <laughs> to you. And you're writing poetry already in first grade. Yeah. Are you in the same class? And you're, yeah. Yes. So you're talking about poetry, and your poems, were they written in school or at home or both? Um, I, wrote, I wrote them both at school, but then I put them in, the book, in this book. So. Ah, and what, kind, what is this book for? Mm. Is it a writing book with your special writing? No, I just kind of do whatever. Whatever. <laughs> so it could be a little drawing, a little collecting. The mm -hmm. flowers and putting them in, <laughs> and now poems. Well, yeah. um, some people call this a journal also, and keep uh, all their writing together. And I think it's a good idea. And actually, I have mine from when I was 10 years old, and it's really all torn and not in very good shape because it's very old. But I'm so glad that I kept it, just like this, to see my voice as a writer when I was back in school in your age. So I am excited for you to be sharing your poetry. I believe you have two poems yes. in your book and then uh, a message for the marathon runners. We yeah. All right, so we've got three things planned. So are you, what is your first poem about? The flower. The flower. Oh, the flower. All right, and what made you think about flowers? Because it's spring. It is spring, yes, thank goodness. 
So I'm just going to invite you to bring your flower poem. You can even rest it right here, and you can speak nice and close and loud for all to hear, even in the very back. And start with your title, all right? <laughs> the Flower by Carly Rolke. Once there was a lonely flower. He was smaller than all the other flowers. Little Flower was sad. He didn't like being small, so he grew up. He was so beautiful. He was more pretty than all the other flowers. That's a powerful poem and tells a bit of story, which sometimes poems can do. And it reminded me of uh, the story of the ugly duckling. I don't know if anyone else thought of that, but it sounded a little different version with a flower. So you were a storyteller in that poem, too. <laughs> now you have a second one. And what is this one about? It's called What Should I Write? What Should I Write? A good question if you're a student <coughs> writer, right? So I would like you to step up even a little closer and nice and loud. Please share your second poem. What Should I Write by Carly Rolke. What should I write? What should I write? Should I write about a ball? Should I write about a cat? Should I write about a car? Oh, what should I write? Please tell me what to write about. I know what to write about. Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> Uh, Carly, I was curious about pizza. Is that a food you like? Yes. Do you have a favorite pizza kind? No. No? Any, any pizza is good pizza for you? Yes. Well, uh, I can tell that you're fond of it from that poem. And maybe we could all go home and write pizza poems. Uh, who knows? When we're sitting outside, right? <laughs> and now I'm curious about the marathon. Uh, your message, did you write that down? Or are you just going to give one? Um, directly straight from your, t your mouth. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. You have a message and a wish, a well wish for the runner. I kind of just have something I want to say, just one thing. All right. If you're in the marathon, good luck. If you're in the <laughs> marathon, good luck. How's that for a good direct wish? Thank you very much. Next, we have Christina Galigo. Christina, could you come on down? Are you in the back also? Yeah, okay. So let's give a hand for Christina as she makes herself. Hi, Christina. How are you doing today? Good. Have you ever participated in a poetry reading before? No. No, uh-huh. How about writing poetry? How long have you been writing? Since first grade. Since first grade, also. Same teacher, do you think, or? Um, probably not. Uh huh. Ah, oh, well, that's good to hear. And now, what grade are you in? Second grade. Second grade. All right. So, have you been writing poems ever since, or just once in a while? Um, probably ever since. Ever since. Ah. Oh. What do you like about writing poetry? I mostly like, um, say, like when I'm in a bad mood, I like it um, because it calms me down, and it's just fun to do. Mm. Well, fun and calms me down, and I think I know um, adult poets who would give those same reasons, that there are things that you can't quite explain, but uh, that it can be very important for your inner, inner self. So well said. And I know that you have brought one poem that I received. Um, yes, and I also have a message for the marathon. And a message for the marathon. Would you like to put it up here while you read? Okay. And you can and just be sure to be nice and loud into the mic. And can you read the title? And then there you go. Fairies by me. <laughs> Fairies fly through the air. Her glow crown sparkles with a glare. Her wings as delicate as can be. Oh, how I wish that was me. I would go to Antarctica to play with the polar bears. Then I would zoom to Hawaii. Surf's up. I'll be there. I would go to the desert. There would be lots of sand. I would feed a camel and ride across the land. Next, I would dash to the White House in Washington, D.C. Then I would meet the president and say, that should be me. I would do a great job. I would treat people fair. I would not hurt them. I would solve their problems with care. Then I'd get tired, my wings would ache. I'd fly back to Massachusetts and soon I'd awake. Oh, what a wonderful dream I had had yesterday. Maybe I'll have the same fun today. <laughs> <laughs> well I can tell you like poetry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, 
I wonder, does that mean you also like to read books? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite kind of book that you like to read? A favorite topic? Uh, um, title? I don't know. I like every book in the world every that I've read. Every book in the world. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How about that? Well, that's good to hear because um, books are special, I think. And so I, I'm thinking someday I want to own a bookstore. Now, I know I'm in the wrong decade, <laughs> maybe, for that. But I have hope. Uh, and I'm going to get your phone number so you can come later on to my bookstore. <laughs> How's that if you love every book in the world? Yeah. So I see you also have a message for the marathon runners that you you would like to read. OK. Um, two days ago, the elite Kenyan runners came to my school. We had a huge, massive pep rally for the Kenyans, and they told us about why they run marathons. Some runners do it for fun. Other, some do it to raise money so children in Kenya have a chance to go to school like we do. Others run to raise money to help find cures for deadly diseases. Just like them, I know there are many reasons you choose to spend many months training in the coldest winter on record just to run the Boston Marathon. My goal one day is to do what you're doing. I want to run the Boston Marathon. I want to experience the energy. I want to have fun and I want to raise thousands of dollars for families who can use a little help. I want to shine like all of you will on Monday. And I'm, and, and I'm not going to, to be worried about what place I come in. Even if I come in last, I'll be unhappy because I set a goal and I achieved it. If you're saying I cannot do it right now, just believe in yourself. Monday, if you, Monday you will experience the energy. You will make new friendships and you will achieve your goal because if you will believe it, you can achieve it. <laughs> Well done, and I'm ready to vote for you for president. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to invite Tyler Butkus to come up here. Ah, here's my guy. All right, hi, Tyler. Hi. All right, so Tyler, uh, what grade are you in? Second grade. Second grade, all right. And are you writing poetry in your class in second grade? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you write it before this year? No. no. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I know that they really take off over in second grade. Do you have Mrs. Altavilla? Yes. Yes, OK. All right. I know she's really excited about poetry, and there's a good number of you here from her class today. And I noticed that you, your focus was a bit uh, athletic about sports. Does that mean you like sports? Yes, very yeah, I much. I see a smile here. OK, what's your absolute favorite sport? Hockey. Hockey. Well, that is evidenced uh, in your poem that you wrote about. Mm -hmm. So would you like to start with a hockey poem? Uh, sure. All right, so uh, you can begin with the title. And I'll step away, and there you go. Hockey. Hockey, hockey, it is very fun. Hockey, hockey, the slap shot flies through the air. Hockey, hockey, snap shots help score goals. Hockey, hockey, no cross checks for me. Hockey, hockey, I want to play in college. Hockey, hockey, the Bruins are my favorite team. You know, I think there should be more sports-related poetry out there, so I have I hope you keep going and you know write more sports-related poetry out there. I think we need that in the world so that the athletes and the poets can join hands. And that would be my husband and myself also. But I would like to give him a book of athletic poetry. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Now, uh, was there a big deal in hockey recent last night? Do you, do you watch hockey on TV? Yes. Yeah, I, I got um, the idea. I'm not quite sure what happened, but um, was it good or bad? Um, not so good. Not the Bruins so good lost to the Red Wings, won nothing. Oh, okay, but there's always next time? Mm -hmm. Sunday. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Other hockey fans out there. <laughs> so then you moved on to think about a well wish for marathon runners. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Did you have a favorite moment when the Kenyan runners came into Elmwood? Um, when the confetti gun blasted. Oh, I bet that was exciting. And now you have a bit of advice, so would you like to share this? Go stop, go slow, fast. 
Go. Off the runners go, racing down the road. Stop. The runners need a drink. Go. Off they go, hydrated and all. Stop. The runners need something to eat. Go. Off they go, hydrated and fed. Stop. The runners need to go to the bathroom. Go. Off they go, <laughs> off they go hydrated, fed, and feeling good. Slow. They're going up Heartbreak Hill. Fast. They're coming down Heartbreak Hill and to the, to the finish line. Hooray. They finished at a great speed. Yay. I get the idea you think it's important to be hydrated when you're running, especially mm -hmm. that's uh, mm -hmm. in a, a high point of running. Mm -hmm. And as an athlete, that's something to keep in mind, the importance of water, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know some very impressive details along the way. Do you watch it on television? Um, well, actually, where I live is like right on Front Street, so I can go to Clinton and then I just watch it. Okay. But then when we come home, we watch the, like, the ending I on see. TV. Well, maybe we'll see you out there then this Monday. And thank you for that important message to share out for the runners. Well done. So, Prisha, uh, it's nice to see you, and I want to welcome you. The microphone is your friend here at the poetry reading. And I'm wondering what grade you are in. Second grade. Second grade in Mrs. Altavilla's class also. Yes. Uh huh. And what did you decide to write about when you were making poems this year? The Boston Marathon. Uh huh. Did you uh, write a wish for them? No. A message? No. Oh. Just a poem. Just a poem. Okay. And uh, was that an uh, was that an assignment that your teacher? asked you to do? Uh, or did you just think, I want to write about the marathon? A teacher said we should write one poem about the Boston Marathon. All right. And you did it. And will you be uh, watching it on Monday? Yes. yes. I, I'm not really sure. Not sure yet. Will you be running it someday? Yeah. Yeah. You like that idea? All right. What else do you like to do besides write poetry and run? I like to jump rope. You like to use your jump rope. That sounds like fun, and these are good days we have coming up in spring for doing a lot of jump rope outside. So maybe there will be a poem about jumping rope pretty soon. Who knows, right? Well, um, oh, I don't see any paper. Does that mean you're just going to recite? Yep. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm going to back away. And is everyone ready there? Yes. We're going to hear this marathon poem recited. I sit with the crowd, why do I cheer? Runners that dash across the people right here. People that clap, jump, scream, and yell until the coach who finds the winner cheers as loud as a bell. The sound of tapping feet that gets louder and louder until all the runners' legs feel as wiggly as solid powder. Go runners, go runners, you could be in first place if you just hurry up and tie your shoelace. Wow. if you like. May I shake your, there you go. And may I shake your hand? Well, well done and recited, which is something that doesn't happen as much in school or life these days, but it has, it's very important um, if you give it a try, because I have worked with uh, writing, poetry writing and making groups with all different ages of life, including a group of wonderful nuns in a nursing home in their later stage of life. And when I would take out a well-known poem and read to them, even if maybe their memory wasn't very good about other things because of getting older sometimes happens, their mouths would start to speak and recite these same poems. And it seemed like they were certain poems that made their hearts feel glad, which was nice to see that something can stay with you that long. So uh, continue on uh, with your writing and reciting as well. Thank you for bringing some reciting today to this poetry reading. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, we'll see you later. Now I'd like to invite Ben Scott up to the stage here. Hi, Ben. How are you? You ready to go? Yes. Um, how many poems did you bring for us today? Um, two. Two poems. 
All right. And what are you in second grade also yes. in Mrs. Altavilla's mm -hmm. class? Yes. What did you decide to write about? Um, the marathon and the other one was um, about water. About water. Uh huh. Now, why did you think about water? No. Were you thinking about hydration, like we heard about earlier, or no. anything? Just uh, did really. it just pop into your head out yeah. of? Sometimes that happens when writing poetry, also, that we get these ideas and not sure where they come from, and it can be very interesting to just trust them and write. So I'm curious, which one would you like to read first? Um, this one. All right. The marathon wish, mm -hmm. yes. So I, I would like to ask you to step up close, as close as you can, and take it nice and slow and loud. I don't know if I'm going to finish. Oh, oh no, I have 10 more miles to go. I feel like I'm some jelly witches in my belly. Oh, look at Nellie, she's up, up with Freddy. Oh, oh my, I'm an unperfect guy. I'm standing quite still, will I finish? Yes, I will. I have a quarter till, my dream is complete. I'm standing now still because I finished. I really, really finished the marathon. <laughs> You know, I thought this one was interesting. I remember it now, and I thought, I feel like I am in the head of this marathon runner uh, because you give it such detail uh, as if the person reading it is the one who's out there. Have you run a marathon to know it that well? Have you run a marathon no. race? Or uh, how about a uh, shorter distance, 5K maybe? Or? Um, I've done like the younger. The younger yeah. version here in Hopkinton? Uh huh. How did that go for you? Did you, did you like it? Mm -hmm. Will you do it again? Probably. Maybe. Will you run the marathon someday? Yeah, I, th I hope uh -huh. so. Yeah. Well, that is a really nice message to share out to all the runners for Monday, so thank you. And now you will tell us a little bit about water. <laughs> water. Water dripping, water jet, water bucket, water wet, water stream, water lake, water sea, water bake, running water, swishing water, gushing water, wishing water, wavy water, splashing water, 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 bashing water. All right, did I shake your hand or go? Shake it again. Wow, well, um, there's a lot of music and rhythm in that one, um, so. That, sometimes poetry can do that and be very musical. I could, I could see that out in, on stage and some of the um, different programs that offer more uh, kind of rap or musical style poetry. And it was a fun little water journey. You're thinking about water a lot, I can tell. <laughs> so any last, last, what are you going to do on your April vacation? Um. I don't know. Not sure. You're going to go in some water, maybe? Uh, maybe. Take a bath? Uh, I don't know. Go, go in some puddles? I don't know. <laughs> go swimming? Maybe. I don't Lots know. Lots of possibilities. Maybe that's your next poem, right? I hope you keep writing out there. And thank you very much for sharing your poems today. All right, we'll see you in the back for the party. Jake Adams. Oh, you're up front. You don't have very far to go. Hi, Jake. Hi. Uh, OK, we're going to get a little bit adjusted on the mic. Are you ready to go? You feel ready? Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Well, I'm glad that you could come out today and share your, you have two poems? Uh, yeah. All right. And are you also in Mrs. Altavilla's class? Mm -hmm. Yes. I know Mrs. Altavilla was very excited that her class, so many could come and share poetry today. And she unfortunately had a conflict and couldn't come. But uh, I encourage you all to tell her details about this reading and how you, how you felt about it. And hopefully that you had some fun as well. So what made you think about your topic of poem, which is homework? Do you have homework in second grade? Yeah. Yes? All right. And. Uh, <sighs> Let's see. Oh, yes, I remember reading this one about homework. Uh, pay attention. Anyone else do homework out there? OK, I, I still do homework also. And uh, I think that Jake has a very interesting uh, message, experience about homework in this case. So I'm building up the suspense. And I'm going to walk away. And I want you to tell everyone your idea of homework. 
Homework, oh homework. Five excuses for not doing your homework. One, the baby ate it. Two, the dog ate it. Three, my mom threw it away. Four, I ate it. <laughs> Five, I ran out of paper so I wrote it on my arm but my mom made me take a shower. <laughs> Homework, oh homework, that's five excuses for not doing your homework. How about that? Well done. All right. So sometimes when we write poems, they are true experiences from our life. Sometimes they are imagined. All are fine. There are no rules when you write poetry. I'm just curious, did that really happen about washing the arm? Nope. No. Oh, so that's imagination. OK, how about this one? Did you eat your homework ever? No. No. OK. <laughs> Anybody here ever eat your homework? OK, one hand went up and then down. <laughs> OK, one in the back. <laughs> Older. OK. That was actually John V. Okay. Well, um, I, actually, my dog really did eat some of my homework. Uh, homework, uh, because uh, she liked paper. So uh, that shows not only imagination, but sense of humor, which we can also use in po writing poetry and get people to laugh. And so thank you for getting us to have a little laughter. Uh, now that we're kicking our heels back and we're ready for school vacation, no homework, right? Yeah. All right. So now you have another topic, and that's on the marathon. Yeah. And could you read your title and go into your poem? Running. Running, 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 26.2 miles, up hills, down hills, running, 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 across streets, across roads, for hours and hours, running, 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 until, wait, it's the finish line, I ran 26.2 miles, I just won the race, running, 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 I'll be going back to Kenya next year and coming back with an even better pace. Serena Luke, could you please come down? We'll clap you on. Hi, Serena. How are you? Good. You ready to share? You have one poem? Yeah. And, yes, and uh, it is the topic of the marathon? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. All right. And did you have the same assignment in second grade in Mrs. Altavilla's class? Mm -hmm. Yes, to write something about the marathon? Yeah. All right. And what made you think about where did your information come from? Did you run the marathon? No. No. She didn't run the marathon. Did you run in an Elmwood race? No. No running. OK. You've never run a race in your life? No. All right. How did you get your information? Well, um, well I know that like in Elmwood, we're talking about, like, people from Kenya, so yes. mm -hmm. I wrote people from Kenya coming, mm -hmm. so the Air Force and... Yes, so uh, that you were listening carefully and put it into your poem. Did you enjoy the Kenya day yeah. when the runners came? What was your favorite point? Um, I liked like when they come in, the spotlight. And oh, yeah. Uh -huh. The spotlight and the big music, right? Mm -hmm. Very exciting over there. Yes. Um, all right. So you have an important message, and this is, is this to the Kenyan, uh, especially runners, or yeah. to, yes, uh -huh. um, or it could be for everyone as well. Yeah. Every, every is it, anybody that runs the anybody marathon. that runs a marathon is anyone running the marathon here? Sort of. Okay. Sort of. <laughs> okay. Sort of all right. Okay. We've got some candidates for the future, but no one actually. But there are many people in Hopkinton who are running. So I think they will appreciate hearing all of these messages, too. So I'm going to step aside. And if you step close to the mic, everybody ready? Yeah. And read into the mic nice and slow. Ready, set, go. Runners, runners, ready to run. Running, running, running is fun. Airports, airports, the airports are full because today is the opposite of dull. Who will be there? Runners from Kenya and people of Hop. People from Hopkinton, of course, fill your water bottles, tie your shoes. Who will win? Maybe you. Ah. Okay. Would you like to take a bow? There we go. Very nice. That was a subtle bow. I like that. I'll shake your hand. Well done. Thank you so much for sharing your message for the marathoners. And I hope you have fun if you run the marathon someday. Now we have something a little different. 
these two students wrote their poem together uh, as a duo. So we have Bella Whaley and Sabrina Russo to come, come on down, you two. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Are you both in Mrs. Altavilla's class? Yes. Yeah. How do you write a poem together is what I'm curious about. We take both of our poems and kind of combine them. Wow. All right. Now, where did this idea come from? Did Mrs. Altavilla say, why don't you two write a poem together? Um, or did you come up with the idea? She said she that you can write it with a partner. Oh, so everyone had an option. You could write it by yourself or with a partner. Yes. And it, it seemed to work very well in putting it together as I was reading it. I, I was impressed. Can't, it's not always an easy thing to do to write with another person uh, that way, but you found a way. What, what made it work well, do you think? Um, we kind of made it into a good combination to make them a good po poem. Uh-huh. And uh, I don't know, did you just like one of you say nope, nope, nope and cross things out? <laughs> or did you have to talk about it? We kind of had to talk about it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Was there much fighting? No. no. <laughs> I didn't think so. I wouldn't ask it if there was. <laughs> but uh, you found a way to work it out and now you have this poem by the two of you. So uh, do you have another? or? Yeah, we have, we have three. three. Oh, you have three, because that's right. That's, I gave the option of one to three. So you'd like to start with Marathon Wish first? Yes. yes. All right. Behind the starting line, in front of the finish line. Written by Bella Whaley and Sabrina Russo. Tap, tap, tap. What was that? It's the runners training. They training, training, training until the big day. Yay, yay, yay! The big day is here. All the runners from around the world are here today at the starting line. Bing, bing, bing! The runners are dying up Heartbreak Hill, then, then run slow, slowly down and sprint and sprint and sprint until someone reaches the finish line. Oh, 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 who won? Yay, it's Michelle. I can see her big smile and she's crying of joy. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so uh, uh, uh. Her big day is over at the podium getting her trophy. All right, thank you. So we'll just take a little cleansing of the poet palette here. Take a moment. Your next poem, what is it about? It's called In, In My Bed, bed written by Bella Whaley and Sabrina Russo. Now I remember this one. Pay attention. I don't know if this is your story, <laughs> but it really shocked me. Here we go. In my bed is messy, messy, messy. Last week I found in my bed a half-eaten burrito, a piece of chewed up bup green bubble gum, crushed up pretzels, last year's softball trophy, a dirty sock, my kindergarten field shirt now ripped, saucy sloppy joes all over my bed, <laughs> no crushed, an old Hershey bar that's now melted, my, my P-Scoop picture, and that's what I found in my messy, messy bag. <laughs> I just, have, I just have to ask, you know, we talked about true versus imagination. Is this true? No. Sloppy <laughs> Joe's in the bed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> burritos, yes, well, it sounds like very active imagination and also a lot of laughing maybe. Were you having a good time when you wrote this one together? Yes. Yeah, well, it sounds like a good exercise. If you're having a day when you need a little laugh, Maybe get together with a friend and write a funny poem. Yeah. Imagine what could be in your, in your bed like that, <laughs> OK? Or what you could do with Sloppy Joes. So now, where are we going? To the marathon? We yeah. have a message poem. OK. I'll step aside and please share the title. Hopkinton to Boston, written by Bella Whaley. From from Hopkinton to Bo to Boston sneak sneakers to lace. From Kenya to California, we all come together 
Wishing everyone hope with hope. All right, thank you. Ooh. Would you like to take a bow together? All right, thank you. May I shake your hand? Well, do you think you're going to keep writing some poems together? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a kind of a fun process. Did we forget anything? No. No. Okay. Well, I hope to see you at the celebration there. And, you know, I think I might find a friend and try that, too. I used to have a Friday, a couple of years ago, a Friday poetry friend. We made a deal. We didn't write together, but we lived far away. But on the computer, we would write a poem, take just 10 minutes, and start to write something down on topic. And we'd pick all kinds of topics. One that I remember particularly that was kind of fun was cheese. Writing a poem about cheese or donkey, all kinds of interesting things, and see what comes out. Um, but I think I like this idea. I'd like to give it a try sometime. So thank you for sharing your work together. And carry on. Write more poems together and by yourself. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to introduce James Cahan. Let's clap him on over here. Hi, James. Hi. How are you today? Good. All right. I see that you have a marathon poem. Do you have any others? No. OK, we're doing the one poem today. And I understand by now this was an assignment to write about the marathon in your class? Yes. And what? What gave you your information? How, do you do a lot of running? No. No running at all? <laughs> I do do some running, a but little not bit. much. Uh huh. Not in a race, not in an organized way? Mm. Uh huh. Just when maybe you're chasing the dog down the street or? I don't have a dog. All right. <laughs> all right, I'll have to use my imagination and think of another. Do you play any sports? Yes. Uh huh. So what sport do you like the best? Soccer. So are you on a team? No. Uh-huh. Just playing out there in the neighborhood. Yeah. All right. So now you have a little bit of uh, background in running. And what do you like best about the day of the marathon? I know. Mm, there's a lot, a lot to it. Do you watch it? Yes. Uh-huh. All right. Did you see the Kenyan day? Yes. All right. What was your favorite part of that? At the end when they shot confetti. The confetti was a big hit, it sounds like, yeah. All right, so here you go uh, with your poem. And I see, I notice a lot of you also have images on your papers of pictures. Can you tell a little bit before you read uh, how you got a picture to come on your paper? My, pic my teacher just put it on. <laughs> your teacher assisted you, all right, to give a little bit of a visual extra. Well, uh, it's a picture of a stopwatch, a hand on a stopwatch. And maybe you can tell the rest of the story about your poem. And so let's begin with the title and step a little closer, please. My, my poem is called The Coach, written by James Cann. Runners, runners everywhere, 10 more miles from here to there. I wish I could run today, but I'm a coach who can't run away. I hope you win today, but if you don't, that's okay. You can do it again next year. Hooray, hooray. Wow. I like that encouragement. Would you like to take a bow? It's optional. Optional bowing. May I shake your hand? I, I think that's a great advice. So uh, I hope you keep writing poems of advice and message. We have Romy Zinman. <laughs> All right. How are you, Romy? Good. Have you been writing for a very long time? Um, no. No. How, when did you start? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago. We have a new, new poet here, newborn poetry, right? And what grade are you in school? Second. Second grade also. All right. In Mrs. Altavilla's class? Yes. Yes, OK. I think you're bringing up the tail end of the class now. And so what did, kind of things did you want to write about? Um, running. Running. You have a marathon poem? Yes. And do you have another? No. No, OK. So uh, what did you want to talk about when you were writing your marathon poem? How 
people run. Different ways of people run? Yes. Uh huh. And did you do research on it or just from your imagination? Just from my imagination. Just from your imagination. Do you like to watch people at the marathon? Yes. All right. And now I'm curious, besides watching people run and writing poems, what else do you like to do on your vacation free time? Go on vacation. Go on vacation? Are you going somewhere? Um, no. Not this time, but other times you like to travel? Where would you like to travel most in the world? Um, New Hampshire. New Hampshire, all right. Well, uh, that's exciting. There are a lot of beautiful places there. So thank you to know a little bit more about you. And now we'll get to hear you share your poem. So I want to invite you to stand very close up and take your time reading and enjoy. Running by Romy Zinman. Run and jog for the, for the greatest day. It is the Boston Marathon. Yay, yay, yay. You are running or you are cheering. Either way, you are achieving. Now the race begins in Hopkinton, in front of Center School. It is 26.2 miles, which makes it very cool. You run through many towns. You almost see Brook Line. You go a little faster to get to the finish line. And now you are in Boston, excited and exhausted. Wow. Would you like to take a bow? Sorry, may I shake your hand? Well done, thank you. Shreya Ravi, please come on up. Please welcome her. Hi, Shreya. Hi. Finally, it's your turn, right? Uh huh. All right. Well, I'm glad. Thank you for being patient in the front row. Now, uh, are you also at Hopkins? Yes. Yes. In grade four? Yes. All right. And uh, have you studied poetry every year? In school? Yes, but this is the first year that I've that I've like really really liked my poetry. Oh, okay. What do you think made the difference in fourth grade? Being in fourth grade. Um, like I thought I took more time on it. Mm hmm And do you mean take more time writing poetry in school or outside of school? In school. In school. All right. Uh huh. And uh, do you like to read as well? Yes. Do you have a favorite kind of book or a ti favorite title? Just curious with what you wrote about. I was I was thinking that with you. Not really. No. I like a lot of books. You like what? I like a lot of books. A lot of books. I could hear a lot of imagination in what you had to write. And I heard beauty in there too, an appreciation of beauty. Do you enjoy nature, being yes. outside? Yes. Um, so today is a beautiful day to invite us to be spending more time outside, right? Mm -hmm. What do you like doing best outside? Are you a hiker? No. A uh, bird watcher? No. No? Just sort of sit and be a poet? Not really. Not really even that. <laughs> OK. You just like being outdoors? Yes. What else do you like? Uh, what, is, what are you going to do on your April vacation? Um, play with friends and relax at home. Relax. There's a good word for us all. All right, and play with friends. Well, I wish you a happy vacation. And you brought two different pieces? Yeah, one marathon piece and one nature poem. All right, so uh, would it be all right with you if I step aside? Mm -hmm. You read your poem, take a pause, and then read the title of the next one? Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? All right, I invite you to just come close as you can. And there you go. Listening to the piece. Atop a mountain at the crack of dawn, you look down. The deep, cool waters glistening in the morning light. The breeze drifts by, the glowing sun warms the air, ray by ray, while birds, songbirds, cardinals, robins galore soar through the sky and sing so melodiously, so gracefully. They sing and fly through the sky with ease. You see the hope inspiring green across the deep blue waters. The leaves sway in the cool breeze. For you, this is a moment of inspiration inspiration and peace. You hear the birds, the ripples of the lake in your mind, it mutes the noise, replaces it with peace, while the breeze drifts by with ease. Peaceful green pine trees deck the mountains, they look as beautiful as jewels. 
and you smell the scent of the cool waters, how you can almost feel the refreshing droplets on your face. You imagine the water far below the mountain, the ripples in a forever going race. They go right by, looking like endless silky lace. You imagine the mountains in the distance, greeting the dawn, dismissing the night, a magical moment in your sight. You feel the soft leaves of the delicate snowdrops. They look like glowing pearls on top of the silver mountain. You notice the glistening droplets of the morning dew. You look up and see the sky's beautiful hue. It fills you with peace. Will you ever see such a sight like this again? And this is my marathon poem, Good Luck Marathon Runners. Little children cheer, runners glow from perspire and win that marathon. <laughs> Nice pal, may I shake a hand too? Well done. And you know, when I heard your first poem there, I know the first time also, there are many beautiful images in there. To me, it feels like a painting. You can paint with your words, which is another thing you can do with poetry. And if you think about it, the act of writing it as well as reading it helps you appreciate the beauty of things and experience gratitude. And sometimes that doesn't come easy to us these days when we're so busy with everyone, everything. Uh, but it can actually do something good for us and enhance life by appreciating beautiful things around us. So you have a good remedy for us uh, in your uh, beauty of poetry there. Thank you very much and well done. We have Vivek Datar. So please welcome Vivek up here. And I know we're going to need to move the mic a bit for you, Vivek. I read your poems, and I've, I know you've come here maybe twice before for student poetry readings. I think once with my sister. Oh, just once, OK. Uh, I read a couple poems by you, and I was impressed. It was a couple years ago, because I haven't done this for two years. Yep. So uh, it, it was a pleasure to read your poetry again. Uh, now at this later stage in your life. And uh, are you doing this mm, on your own or more in school? They well, write poetry in Hopkins? Yes. Um, there was one from fourth grade and one that I did a little in school and then did add some on at home. Uh -huh. um, oh, that's what I like to hear, extracurricular poetry writing in fourth grade. Good. Um, so does that mean you have a little bit of interest that continues on beyond school? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, good. Uh, have you ever thought about trying to get a group of writers going over there at Hopkins? No. No? All right. Well, I'd just like to give you the spark of suggestion. Um, you know, one thing that happened uh, with the diary I was reading, I realized in sixth grade, way back in time, I had invited a few of my friends who were new, who were writers to come out at recess. Everyone else was playing basketball and things like that. And I had a poetry reading, and I'd tell them, bring your newest poem, and we'd sit around, and we'd read poems like that. And I totally forgot about it till I had that diary, and I read it a few years ago. And I never thought I'd be doing the same thing back to po poetry after being a psychologist. So it stays with you your whole life. Oh, yes, it does. Do you have any ideas what you want to do you know, after high school? Is it to uh, be a poet, or is it something else, you think? Something else. Some, any idea yet? <laughs> a video game designer occasionally, possibly a scientist, maybe an author. I don't really know. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's a lot of possibilities. Yep. Uh, but just let me just let me step in there and say poetry can always be a part of whatever you do too. It could. Seems like you know that. So uh, would you like to do this yourself and just read your yep. first poem, the title, and then pause and do the second? Yep. And I'll step aside and let you go. The first poem is kind of a riddle, so I'll just ask if you know what it is by the end. It's shaded eyes through glasses peep at the time when others sleep. Its silent wings beat through the night, bringing poor Mousy quite a fright. Hungered fulfilled, it settles down to roost, its wisdom hidden from the light of day, as in the sun it is much reduced. Um, it's an owl. Yep. Ah, very good. Anybody else guess that out there? Those are good clues in that poem. So that's another way. I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet now so you can go. Um, 
And the next poem is Three, Three Blue Eggs. I did a painting on it as well um, during art. Um, Three shiny eggs, bright blue nestled cozily. I see my sky reflected in you. Three tiny little chicks just waiting to escape. Three bright blue eggs nestled with caring and warmth, not to be eaten, but to be raised, hatched when the time is right. But when the chicks hatch and the family leaves, the nest is left alone, lonely, depressed, abandoned, friendless. Nothing to comfort it, nothing but blankness. Even the nest itself is nothing but a bed of sticks and twigs. But after the sticks are scattered to the wind, two more birds shall come, they shall rebuild the nest and lay their eggs, and the cycle shall start over anew again. Nice job there. And you know, there's that line about the blue of the sky is reflected mm -hmm. in the eggs. eggs. Yeah, which I thought was really a, a stunning line. And I also see how at the end you came to talking a little bit philosophically, which you can do in poems too about the circle of life in a way. Wow, what what a what a nice atmosphere. Every every single poem I read today or I heard today was extremely nice, and everyone everyone did such a fabulous job. Let's give them another round of applause, please. They deserve it. Today I have a poem uh, called Ode to Rain. I actually uh, made this poem when I was in seventh grade, and I performed it here at HCAM Studios. Um, so here it goes. Oh, water from the heavens. How I love the grace in which you fall. You quench earth's thirst. You bring us life. Droplets dancing in the sky. Partnered with neighboring trade winds. A ballet, nothing short of divine. O oh, water from the heavens. You caress from the sky like pounding hooves of a horse. How I love the music you create. You bless us with your symphony. A gentle splat for woodwinds. A heavy pound for brass. Your good friend Thunder joins in on bass. Adding lightning's flashes, the concert completes. Oh, water from the heavens. How I love the serenity you create. You wash away the stress. You see the same magic in all beings with spiritual devotion. You cleanse out the soul, carefree and without worry, while you gently kiss our skin, a total state of bliss to contemplate our lives. Thank you. <laughs> So standing here today really makes me think back to uh, my ele elementary school years. Uh, when I was in fourth grade, I actually never really liked poetry or writing. It sounds it sounds funny to me today to be reading uh, reading my poetry because I I never I never liked the idea of writing or, or of having writing assignments for my teachers and uh, just just sharing my thoughts. It was never it was never comfortable for me. But uh, since I reached seventh grade, uh, I really, I really started to connect with my English teachers more, and uh, we created uh, some writing groups in school. And as we got together, it just uh, it really helped me connect with myself more as well as my peers as we wrote together and uh, and just enjoyed different forms of writing, um, poetry. I found poetry uh, with my English teacher, Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, he, he really inspired me uh, really well to, to reach out and, uh, and just, let, just let my heart reach out to others. So I'm really thankful to him. Um, but really, the message I give you all got to, all, to everyone is that you don't have to be master Dickinson poets. You, you, can, you, can, you can love Dr. Seuss your whole life. I mean, who doesn't love Dr. Seuss? <laughs> so uh, 
uh, just keep writing and uh, believe in yourself. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>